And, and you just kind of think about that. Think about, what, think about what we just read Jesus said. The things that are in our hearts. That's what defile, when it comes out, that's how we're going to be defiled. Paul talked about defiling the temple. If any man defile the temple of the Holy Ghost, uh, I don't remember the rest of what it said, but he said not to defile the temple of the Holy Ghost. How do you defile the temple of the Holy Ghost? By eating bacon and donuts and Reese's peanut butter cups? Which, you want to talk about defilement, Jack. Our buddy Alan and Cindy, his wife Cindy brought me... This is huge, man. Look at this. That's a Reese. That's one Reese's peanut butter cup. There was two of them in here. Alicia and Caleb and everybody else got the other one. I've kept this one hidden. I did enjoy a piece of it today, however. That's not what defiles us. So it's what comes out of us that defiles us. This right here is what is in us. We have that in us right now. That is the no good thing that Paul talked about. That is sin that dwelleth within him that he talked about. That's what's in us, and we don't, I don't want it to come out. That would defile us. Um, here's another picture of it right here. It is Isis and Osiris. Isis and Osiris. And... They are opposites. They are male and female. They are, drum roll please, <laughs> sons of God, daughters of men. And they produce the little baby, the Antichrist. So think about Genesis 6. And by the way, let me, let, me, let me show you this one. Okay, What do you see here? One, two, three on the top. One, two, three on the bottom. Sons of God, they're greater than the ones that are on the bottom. Sons of God on the top, daughters of men on the bottom. That's what this is. Genesis chapter 6. Sons of God and daughters of men, and then their hybrid, their child. That's what they produce. Um, let me show you this one. This is in Washington, D.C., this is the Boy Scout Memorial in Washington, D.C. Do you know who that is? That is Osiris, the sun god, and that is Isis, or Ishtar, or Ashtaroth, or Easter, on the other side. That's his consort. That's his Shekinah, by the way, his Shekinah. And Osiris and Shekinah got together... Because their pastor told them that they needed to enjoy each other more. And so Osiris and Shekinah got together. And when they got together, lo and behold, something rose out of the middle of them. It was the beast, the child of Osiris and Isis. Or excuse me, yeah, Shekinah. That's what that symbol represents. Here's a... Here, here's what an, another version of it looks like. An, a, a, another version says this. It's the yin and the yang, the, the two triangles intersecting, the hexagram, the six-pointed star, sons of God, daughters of men, three pointing up and three pointing down. And by the way, you have the four living creatures of the four beasts surrounding them. They represent earth, air, fire, water. They represent... Um, the four elements, they represent the false gospel of the Antichrist. They represent adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thiamine. Because three of these are the same in that they are animals. One of them is different in that it's the face of a man. And the three gospels, are diff are the three gospels Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are called the synoptic gospels because they're virtually identical. John is different. You see the connection here. And so is adenine, guanine, and cytosine. They are virtually, they are very identical in their makeup. And when you have one strand of, of DNA, it's not DNA, it's RNA. And in RNA, you have adenine, guanine, and cytosine, but you don't have thiamine. You have uracil. But when the strands are together and you have two-strand DNA, you have adenine, guanine, and cytosine, but then something different. And that's thiamine. And that's what you see here. That's why the synoptic Gospels are the same and John's different.
And you can see that all through the scriptures. You have when you, anytime you have you have, to have four things together, one of them is going to be different. You say, "Well, I don't know about that, Pastor." Go read the book of Daniel. Go look in the fiery furnace. Who's in the fiery furnace? Well, there was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but there's somebody else in there. And the fourth is like the Son of God. Oh, no, excuse me. Uh, another translation says, a son of the gods. That's what the NIV, RSV, NASB, HSV, all the other SVs, that's what they all say. Um, let's see here. Where was we going with this? I had a, I had a purpose for this. Here's Todd Bentley's T-shirt again. This is, this is the Joel's army that he's promoting. Um, there are other groups that are promoting the same thing. Here is a new conference. Ariel sent me this. Ariel, I appreciate it. With um, our contemplative pastorette, Beth Moore, who goes into trances and hears the voice of God on the inside of her, telling her that she must awaken. Have you heard of these awakening conferences? This is um, um, Robeson. What's his, what's his first name? I can't think of it. Um, he does this talk show on, on uh, TBN. And um, he's all about... Um, uh, well, I, I, can't even, I can't remember his name now. It's escaped me. It's, it's Robeson is what his name is. He's the one putting on this big awaken conference. And we're going to have a big awakening now. We're going to have a big grand awakening. Where is my where's my email on this? I can't find it. I'm I'm so discombobulated here. Hang on a second. And I'm running out of time. That makes me a little nervous when I run out of time. Ariel, I printed your email. Here it is right here. Awaken now, the theme of our 50th anniversary conference at Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas. Is awaken now. Uh, the only hope we have for peace, security, and divine enabling necessary to share Christ with the world in darkness is to experience another great spiritual awakening. L let, me, let, me, let me stop right here for a minute. The Bible says that if you are born again, you are already awake. There, there needs no further awakening from you. We are children of the day. We are, chi we are not children of the night. They that sleep, sleep in the night. They that be drunk or drunken in the night. We are not asleep. So how can we go to a conference that promises us that we're going to wake up, we're going to have a new awakening? How can we, why should we go to a conference that's going to promise us that it's going to awaken us when the Bible clearly says that we are not asleep? We are awake. We are the ones, if you are a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, you have the Holy Spirit of God in you, you are not asleep. You're awake. You're awake in the way that it really matters. You are spiritually awake. But Robeson and these others, it's all New Age talk is what it is, is that you are, you, the church, you hear them talk about it all the time, the church is asleep. The church is spiritually asleep. We, we are asleep. We do, we're all asleep, asleep, asleep. And see this set up. It's setting people up to think, oh, wow, we are asleep. Oh, we need, a, we need an awakening, don't we? Let's go, and, and I saw the bands that they're going to have there. Let's go play this, this bangity-bang rock and roll music. That's the first thing. Let's play the drums now. Boom, da boom, da boom, da boom. Oh, that'll wake you up. And let's bring in the hip-hop uh, teachers, Beth Moore, who contemplates Christ, the inner Christ in her, who speaks to God on the inside of her. She goes into a trance and hears the whispering voices because familiar spirits speak as whispering voices according to the King James Bible. So let's go let Beth Moore, who is a New Age or New Age sympathizer, tell us that we need an awakening. They got Mike Huckabee going there because he's going to talk about politics. And you've got to, if you're going to be part of Joel's army and there's going to be a great awakening and you're going to take dominion over the country, then you've got to have the political guy there. Uh, and Mike Huckabee used to, used to be, probably still is, a Southern Baptist preacher. And it's all about because they say we're asleep. But it's, the, here's the thing. Here's what awaken means. Awakening is not the fact that the church is spiritually asleep and we've not been paying attention and we need to rise up now and do something so God can go, oh, oh, you're ready now because you're doing something. And I, and I will tell you that any conference like this, 
any conference like this. And preaching like this, we like preaching like this because it sounds like old-fashioned preaching. Where they say, ah, you got to do this, and if you expect God to do this, then you must do this. But I'm telling you, be careful about amening some of these preachers who are setting you up with a works gospel or a work salvation. The idea that you must perform before God is going to do something, I don't see it in the Bible. I see it in the Old Testament. I see it a lot in the Old Testament. I do not see it in the New Testament. I see where we believe and God will do. But anyway, it's about awakening. What is it that needs to be awakened? Here's a clue for you right here. This uh, was on MSN. Temporary tattoos that can measure brain signals wirelessly. They sent me this and said, Pastor, it was just interesting. Here we had, you see the three marks there on this guy's forehead. And uh, those tattoos on his forehead where his third eye is, is going to measure his brain signals. What needs to be awakened as far as the New Age movement is concerned is the uh, the spirit that is lying at the base of your spinal cord. There's a beast sitting down there, and he's asleep. And he needs to be awakened. Sleep. You know what sleep is in the Bible? It's death. So I want you to think about this. You have a dead thing on the inside of you. It's no good thing that Paul said. It's at the base of your 33-bone spinal column. And so when the beast rises up through the seven chakras, I'm going to be teaching on that in the next Watchman broadcast. I'm, i got a lot more to go with this number seven thing. And I hope you don't mind. I hope, it doesn't, I hope you don't think I'm just dragging it out. Um, I decided when I was going to redo the King James Code series that I was going to make every number as in-depth as I possibly can. And there's even stuff that I'm leaving out. Wait till you hear about Snow White. All right? Um, but anyway, the seven chakras that are in your body, the seven portals that the beast is going to go through, and he's going to reach your pineal gland. And when he activates your pineal gland, normally when your pineal gland is activated, <sighs> it's time to go to bed. And by the way, how many of you yawned just now? Okay? Yawns are contagious. But anyway, when your pineal gland is activated, you fall asleep. They call it an awakening. You see, they've turned evil into good and good into evil. They've turned everything upside down. Uh, Sophie sent me this. This is the God that's going to be worshipped. This is the God of enlightenment who has a thousand... A thousand lights, a thousand eyes, all right? He has a thousand eyes, one for each year of his new kingdom. You remember Adolf Hitler had, was going to instill or install what he, what he called his thousand-year Reich, his thousand-year reign. Hitler believed himself to be a messiah. So does the beast. And so we have the thousand eyes on the...